All right, David Cain here with another question bank question in uh, the topic 6.2. This is Newton's laws of gravitation. In this question, we're dealing with a satellite which is in a circular orbit around the Earth, and the radius of the circular orbit is uh, 4.2 times 10 to the seventh meters. Uh, the first part of the question says, on the diagram for the satellite in the position shown, draw an arrow or draw arrows to represent the force or forces acting on the satellite. Well, the satellite exists in a gravitational field, uh, so it's going to experience a force of gravity. The uh, item setting up the field here is the Earth, so it'll be attracted to the Earth, just as the Earth is attracted to the satellite. So that's the force of gravity. Uh, many students try to draw an arrow this way to represent a force which is pushing it along the circle, but in, in fact the satellite doesn't need a force acting along the length of the circle to continue moving in the circle. There, there's negligible amounts of resistance out here in, in space. Uh, so in order to keep a constant velocity, it, it doesn't need any horizontal forces. Objects in motion stay in motion. In fact, if there was a horizontal force, it would be accelerating and it, its velocity would be increasing. Um, so the only force acting on it, the only arrow that we need, is the force of gravity, it's a centripetal force straight towards the center of the Earth. Part B says uh, deduce that the velocity of the satellite at that orbit is given by this expression. Uh, so basically we have to derive this expression, where capital M is the mass of the Earth, R is the radius of the satellite's orbit. Um, this kind of question is pretty common, or at least the skills in it show up a lot. Uh, this kind of question always comes back to the fact that the sum of all the forces in this scenario is just the force of gravity. Because that was the only one. So the sum of all the forces is the force of gravity. At the same time though, the satellite is moving in a circle. And any time anything is moving in a circle, the sum of all the forces is a centripetal force. Combine these two and we can say that the force of gravity in this case is a centripetal force. Uh, th those are arrows, not a, not, a, not a greater than sign. The force of gravity is a centripetal force. These two terms have all of these elements in them. The force of gravity is g, gravitational constant, m, mass of one thing, m, mass of the other thing, on the radius between them, squared. And centripetal force is m, v, squared, on the radius of the circle. It's the same R in both cases. And in both cases, this is the same m. This is the mass of the satellite, little m. Big m is the mass of the Earth. Little m is the mass of the satellite. Both masses show up in the force of gravity. But this is the motion of the satellite. So it, it's the centripetal force on the satellite, and that's its mass times its velocity squared divided by its orbital radius. Looking at this equation, we see that there are similar elements on both sides. Little m cancels out. And this r cancels with one of those two r's, uh, which gives us g m on r equals the square of velocity, which is what we were asked to find. Then we move on to part c. It says, hence, deduce that the period of orbit t of the satellite is given by this kind of monstrous looking equation. It's okay. First clue is it says hence, which means we're meant to use what we have here to solve this. And what I see is that some substitution has been made, but not everything. There's still a G, there's still an M, there's still R's, although there seem to be more of them now somehow, but there appeared a period, and there disappeared velocity. So it looks like we substituted velocity for some other expression involving period. This is the expression. The velocity of an object moving in a circle is the distance that it travels divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. If you're traveling in a circle, one example of a distance you might travel is the circumference of that circle, 2 pi r. The time that it would take you to travel in that circle would be the period. 
And this is how we relate the velocity to the period. That's the substitution we're going to make. We need velocity squared, though. So I might turn this into v squared equals 4 pi squared r squared t squared. But velocity squared is also equal to gm on r. So this is also equal to gm on r. So there is an equation that's going to simplify to this. Here's how it works. We'll start with cross multiplication. Uh, we'll multiply across here and we'll multiply across here. That gives us t squared times gm. t squared times gm is equal to 4 pi squared r squared times r. All right. Uh, r squared times r is really r cubed. And then to get t squared by itself, I'll divide by gm. And that gives me t squared equals 4 pi squared r cubed on gm, which is what I was setting out to find.